The next thing we want to deal with is what are some of the challenges as somebody who is neurodiverse to stay employed? And there's quite a few because overall, because neurotypicals are the majority of the world, the rules tend to be written to favor neurotypicals. So some of the different things that uh, cause problems, we're going to start with honesty kills. Now, we were all taught, you know, since we were young, that we should be telling the truth, that we should be honest. But we also know that there is a level of social skill that says sometimes it's better not to tell the whole truth. You know, if you're a, a boyfriend or a girlfriend or a significant, you know, relationship of whatever type asks you, you know, am I looking fat? A good answer is probably not yes. <laughs> but as a neurotyp or neuro, you know, diverse kind of person, I would probably say yes. <laughs> we have a tendency to not have a good filter. What comes to our mind is what we say, whether it's appropriate or not, because we don't process the emotional content of it. We just process the words. We take the literal words. You asked this question, I gave you the answer. I didn't feel or think or even relate to how you would react to that answer. So, Honesty can kill. And I'll give you an example here. And this is, again, a, uh, another example of uh, how Tim got fired another time. <laughs> and I was working for a uh, company. And they, uh, actually, I was a consultant brought in for this company. And there was another consultant brought in that uh, she was supposedly this super high level that had worked on the Microsoft Business Intelligence Development team. And you know, she was supposed to, in that field, just about walk on water. And that's the field I also work in. So she was brought in to be the architect and the designer of everything, and I was brought in to essentially do the grunt work and grind through all that stuff. Well, working with her, it didn't take me very long to figure out that that guru was a fraud. She didn't actually know. She knew the words. She could sound really good to somebody who didn't really know the technology, and she could tell a great story. She was kind of like in that interviewing thing. She was really great at communicating and could use the right words, but she actually didn't know how to do the stuff. And when I recognized that, you know, I felt my obligation isn't to her. My obligation is to the people that are paying me. So. I started challenging her in meetings. When she would say something that was blatantly wrong, I would call her out on it. Well, that didn't go over very well. Then it got to the point where if she started getting cantankerous when I called her out on it, I'd just get up and leave the meeting. Again, not what I would call the uh, best way to handle things, but it was that or I was going to kill her. So it was probably better that I got out of the room. And then it finally got to the point where I actually went to the uh, CTO of the company and sat down and told him, this woman is a fraud. She doesn't know what she's doing. Well, he was the person that had actually hired her. And what he took out of that was I was a problem because his guru is a guru. He knows it. He hired her. And the net result was I got fired. But I did get a little vindication in the long run because about a month later, the recruiter reached out and called me and said, uh, they let the guru go and they wanted to know if I'd go back to the job. Well, another thing that you should learn about uh, neurodiverse is if we can't respect somebody, we have a big problem working for them. And you can certainly imagine what my respect was for this guy after I got canned. So, no, nope, I did not go back. <laughs> Another problem with uh, staying employed is meltdowns. Now, meltdowns are probably best described as they look like a tantrum. You know, if you were to uh, see somebody uh, acting this way, you would probably say they're throwing a tantrum. But there's a big difference between a meltdown and a tantrum. And what that big difference is, why is it happening and is there an intent behind it? You know, the reason you throw a tantrum is you're trying to manipulate people to do something. The reason you have a meltdown is you've had a brain overload and it's a lot like having a seizure. Not that it's physically like a seizure, 
but it's the kind of thing that once it starts, you cannot stop it. You have to just let it run the course. So big difference meltdown tantrum is, are you really trying to accomplish and manipulate or are you simply your brain went offline and you're just melting? <laughs> That's the difference. The problem is most companies' policies will fire you for having a meltdown at, at work. Where is the area that most of us tend to have the most stress on us at any given time? It's going to be at work. So where are we going to lay so likely melt down? At work. Give you an example. And this is another example of Tim getting fired. <laughs> I was, uh, this is actually a really strange uh, kind of combination. I was put at a company A to extract company B's data while I was being paid by company B, who was a customer company A. But company A wouldn't give them the data they wanted even though they were a customer. They just said, you put a person here and you can get it yourself, but we won't do it for you. So kind of a little strange scenario. I'm sitting in the offices of people who uh, didn't want to give up data doing this work. High pressure, they had messed up uh, the company that was originally doing it, had kind of made some bad hires initially. Uh, and they were already three months behind. So we had a very fast track project and had huge pressure. We're down to the day of deploying. We're on the call in the morning as we're kind of making sure we're all in alignment. And the customer liaison, uh, basically uh, I, I took it as he insulted me. And he might not have meant it that way, but I took it that way, which I already didn't like the guy. That really pissed me off, but I needed to get this thing rolled out. So I just kind of stuffed it and kept working. Well, when I got done and got the deployment done and it was working and it was running and you know we were successful, I called my project manager who was only part-time on this project, so he was not on site. And I totally unloaded on him. I mean, I just kind of like melted down and lots of nasty stuff came out of my mouth uh, about not about the project manager, but about the customer liaison and how screwed up the project was and all those things. So I vented, I got it off my chest, I hung up and you know finished up my work and went home. And I get a phone call that says, uh, don't go back tomorrow, you're banned from the building. And you know if you can't go back to the building, we're dropping you from the project. What had happened was somebody that was in the cubes near me felt threatened because I was yelling in the phone at my project manager. And they went to HR and HR followed the policy. If there's somebody who seems threatening and you don't keep them around. So there's an example where I had a meltdown, which is a normally expected thing among neurodiverse and should be accommodated because this does fall under ADA compliance. And instead, you get fired. So that's another area that often the neurodiverse have challenges staying employed is if you have a meltdown at work, is that going to make you the person that they fire? And then we kind of brushed on this one already and that's the what comes out of our mouth. And the way that that one usually works is uh, it's kind of like the woman that was on the first slide that was looking at the computer with the you know, look in her face that she's just totally aghast. And when you get out in the corporate world, you're going to run into this. You're going to run into neurodiverse people that are going to say things that they're 100% correct. They may even be appropriate for the time, but the way they're said is 100% inappropriate. You know, instead of saying to you, well, what's going on with the computer when they're trying to help you fix it, they walk up and they say, what'd you do to the computer? which certainly doesn't sit real well. It makes you feel like they're accusing you of breaking the darn thing. So that gets you a reputation as being not the kind of person we want to keep around a company. So those are just uh, you know, some of the real challenge areas for the neurodiverse to stay employed.